everybody. I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to an awesome episode of VO Buzz Weekly. That is right. Today we have the voice of Hulu and all around awesome guy, mm -hmm. Dave Fenoy. Yes. You're going to love today's episode. Absolutely. Uh, Chuck. Yes. Tip of the week. Tip of the week, hallelujah, tip of the week. You know what, this is this is a good one. This it's is a, a very good one. Good one. Um, very unusual tip for anybody to give, mm -hmm. including me. But uh, <laughs> we're gonna talk about effective practicing. And I'm gonna relate this to uh, you musicians out there and, and, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, but everybody else gonna be able to relate with this as well. When a musician is growing up and they're learning their chops, the, the, one of the things that they do is that they aspire to be like another musician. And if, if there's somebody that they like, whether it's on piano or a singer or a guitar player, they, they listen to them over and over and they learn their songs how they play their songs and and their and their and, and their handwriting not their handwriting their songwriting <laughs> handwriting what are you a forger now uh, and uh, and and you actually become really good mm -hmm. by doing this it's amazing yeah. you can do the same exact thing with voiceover actors that you aspire to be like and here's an easy way to do this you go to voicebank.net right um, Everybody who's in the business is on there. You can search by name or category, commercials, promos, trailers, animation. Or by agency if you know their agency. Yeah. Find somebody that you really like what they're doing in whatever category that you're interested in. And l seek these people out. Find out how they're doing out there. If they're making it happen, then you should be learning from them. Mm -hmm. Listen to their color, their cadence, their expression, how they formulate everything that they do and aspire to be like that. Give that, make that your bar yeah. um, that you want to reach. And I will guarantee you, seriously speaking, that if you take the time and you do this, you will get a lot better at what you do. Mm -hmm. Practice, practice, practice. Practice, practice, practice. Absolutely. Okay, you guys, last week you saw our tribute to Don LaFontaine. Incredible. I mean, it just, it still is with me. Oh, man. Um, what an awesome guy. You met his incredible wife, Nita Whitaker LaFontaine, singer, actress, and author. She, after about a year, after mm -hmm. Don passed away, did not intend to write a book, but it was something that she started doing, a writing workshop to help her handle the loss of the love of her life. And yeah. out of that came this book, Finding My Voice. She's gonna start crying again. <laughs> no, seriously speaking. No, you guys, this is this is something. It, it is just. It is. I know. Stacey, it is a love story. It is a love story, and, and it is something that you can. Oh, I've got to pull myself together. That if you've suffered a loss of a loved one or or a really really difficult time, I mean, the, every single page is just her heart, and I cannot recommend this to you enough. You have to you have to read this. Her website, NitaWhitaker.com. You can also find her CDs. She has three CDs that are Incredible just... Singer. Her voice is from the yeah, angels. Yeah, so great. So please pick it up and uh, support her work and her, Absolutely. her voice. And uh, now we're coming to you straight from beautiful, sunny <laughs> Southern California <laughs> with the amazing Dave Fenoy. Yes. You guys, our guest today pretty much does it all. Over 30 million online viewers know him as the Hulu guy. Gamers are loving him as Lee Everett in The Walking Dead. And he has also been the announcer for the Billboard Music Awards, the American Music Awards, the Teen Choice Awards, and for the last 15 years, the NAACP Image Awards. He is awesome. We're so happy he's here. And he is a Neumann-endorsed artist. He is the amazing Dave Fenoy. Wait a minute. That, that's you. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, wow. listen. Say Neumann endorsed artist like five times fast. It is. <laughs> it is really hard. <laughs> Dave, congratulations. Good to thank see you. Thank you. Thank nice you for to being see here. you for Glad being be, on. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Oh, I, I'm man. really honored to be here. I have watched your show, and uh, I think for voiceover, it is one of the best things going. I find Thanks. myself yeah. learning things from uh, the great people that you have had on and, and talked to. So I'm honored and happy to be here. And maybe I'll learn something for myself. Oh, my gosh. Well, Wouldn't you that be already amazing? have. Wait. Before, you told us that. Are, but you were telling us, which is this is actually very, very cool, that you're learning stuff about people that you've been working with for years, some of our guests, mm -hmm. yeah. that you didn't even know before. Yeah. Which Debbie is cool, Debbie right? Derryberry. We were just talking about her <laughs> yeah. and her, uh, you know, she... Her basically had a, a, a Debbie Derryberry sales. Yes, yeah, we did. We had a she sales did. event. She we did. did. And we have to say, Dave Fenoy has 
has his, his own line of merchandise. He brought us Dave Fenoy mugs. So these are available on DaveFenoy.com. So you're going to have to step up because yeah. I so, brought my mugs. Yeah. So you're going to have to bring that. your Thank own you. stuff. You're going to have to start right? bringing it on, guess. <laughs> Oh, the water tastes better. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> ah, you're welcome. So, thank you for the mug gifts. We appreciate <laughs> That's that. That's so great. You're more than very, very welcome. cool. More than welcome. And uh, we're going to start off, man, because everybody has a unique story, and I and we they love hearing about this, mm -hmm. and I do too, and Stacy yes. does too. But how did the whole voiceover thing happen for you? How did you start? In this Don't wow. leave anything out. Don't start leave anything out. Uh, well, I uh, like a lot of guys in in voiceover. I was a disc jockey. Okay. I was doing uh, radio up in the Bay Area, and uh, this is during the 80s. And in the early 80s, I was, uh, actually before I got on air, I was the continuity director at KBLX. Mm -hmm. And one of the jocks one day, was a friend of mine, was leaving as I was coming in. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? He goes, yeah, I got to get over to the city, man. You know, I got a voiceover yeah. session. And I went, huh? A what? A, a what? Uh -huh. I said, voiceover. You know, I'm voicing some commercials. And I went, oh, wow, yeah, yeah, wow, I never thought of that. Oh, forest for the trees, I never even saw mm. it. Uh, and he said, I actually make more money doing voiceover than I do on the radio. And that planted the seed. It was right, two right. years before I did anything about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the seed was planted there, and I could never get it out of my mind. So I had gotten on the radio finally, and I'm working, and I kept trying to, how am I going to? get into voiceover and I ask a few questions. Oh, you got to put together a demo tape. So of course I did it all wrong. I <laughs> took some of the radio spots I had done, uh, which are all retail, all bad. Yeah. How many phone numbers, directions <laughs> to the place and times you can get everything in oh, in 60 nice. seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You, and you can get it now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on down. We've got it. 10% off. 50% off. Up. So uh, I put together <laughs> about three or four minutes worth of those. Oh my goodness. And uh, uh, took that demo, or sent that demo, and of course, this is in the time of reel to reel. Mm. Oh, nice. Yeah, um, and uh, sent that demo over to Stars and Joan Spangler, who is still, uh, uh, not Stars, it was Look, uh, who is still an agent in San Francisco, wow. and of course, about a week later, I'm on the phone, call, hey, hi, Dave Fenoy here. I, I want to talk with Joan Spangler. <laughs> Too bad you didn't have a mug, Dave. <laughs> yeah, well, I really would have sealed the deal. <laughs> the only mug I have in was this one. <laughs> I want to talk with Joan Spangler because uh, I sent my tape over and I know she wants to uh, sign me up and rep me for a voiceover. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry, Joan's busy now. You know, mm. call back in a week. A week. A week. <laughs> you know. And it was several weeks later when she finally took my call and said, well, come on in and she listened to my tape. She hadn't listened to it before. She listened. You know it takes oh. about a week to listen to a reel-to-reel. -reel. First you got to find a machine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, plus everybody else was sending her reel-to-reel. -reel, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but she uh, put it on. She listened to it. She says, well, you know, you, you, you've got some talent, but you're really not ready, and this tape is not It's too long, too much retail stuff. You really want some national things. and uh, So uh, go back and, and see me again in six months. Oh. Okay. So uh, I, I redid the tape. I uh, made up some commercials and uh, that were national, and uh, shortened it to about two and a half minutes, and sent it back. And uh, she listened. Actually, I left some of the things on there that I kind of liked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. she listened to it, and and she signed me. And uh, I actually booked my first audition. Wow! It was for I the love California that. Lottery. Wow. And uh, that got me going, and I became the voice of uh, Marine World Africa USA, all their concerts, and a number of other things. I was doing some things for TV20. I had a gig. Wow, I haven't thought of this in years. <laughs> um, this the show is therapeutic. I know. Uh, it does. We should get a couch. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, Lay back and tell us Back in the it. 80s, for all, for all you young kids, uh, there were these 976 numbers. Mm. I remember those. And uh, not that and I ever doubted. They me. had sex lines and this kind. Of, <laughs> and I became the the voice of the Michael Jackson Hotline and the <gasps> Prince Hotline. Wow! All the hottest, latest information on Michael Jackson and Prince that I would record a couple times a week. Do you I, remember anything you said, like what it sounded like? Oh yeah, it was kind of oh the Michael Jackson Hotline and Michael's doing this and Michael's doing that, but the Prince Hotline was a little cooler. Yeah. It's Prince Hotline, and Prince is this, and you can catch him in concert, and he's got a new album. <laughs> 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 
Uh, You're like, I'm getting paid. See, you yeah. were preparing for Hulu back that yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It was just a uh, matter of time. And I was doing some stuff for uh, TV20 there, too, mm -hmm. which, now this was crazy because uh, TV20 was an independent television station. I was one of their announcers. And when they hired me, and this was a great deal, I was so excited. It was all the promos you could do in an hour mm. for $25. Wow. Oh, my word. <laughs> now, you wouldn't do that today. Oh, <laughs> Hail to the no. <laughs> Hail to the no. So did you speak faster or slower? If you um, that's, in, uh, that's incredible. You know, I, I don't even remember what those promos sounded like How anymore. many yeah. promos can you do in an hour? Wow. Well, I, I not as lot. many as I can do now. I've yeah. gotten a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm that's sure. That's good. Way to but, hold uh, those skills, yeah. I did, a, I did a lot, and you actually had to, uh, you, you went in and you did your own engineering and the whole thing. This guy was... Ripping wow. us off. Yeah, <laughs> big time. <laughs> TV 20. Wow. Wow. TV 20. In a while. Oh, they're not still around, are they? They might be. They Oops. might be. Oops. <laughs> Better Shame edit that on you, TV 20. Shame on you Shame for exploiting you. new artists. But uh, I, I had a buddy there, uh, Toby Gleason, who's still living up in the Bay Area and uh, has a company called Jazz Casual. His dad uh, was Ralph J. Gleason, mm. who interviewed mm -hmm. all the jazz stars and, and the Beatles and whatnot. The first time I went to his house was a big picture of him with the Beatles. I'm like, wow. uh, what's up with this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's made that his business, uh, redoing uh, his dad's work. But uh, he and I got started in the voiceover business about the same time, and uh, Denny Delk was already a fixture up there, and uh, another buddy of mine getting started, Joe Paulino, who's still doing a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And one day, we were booking about the same amount, about a, a job every month or two. Mm -hmm. And one day he started booking more often, and I asked him, well, what are you doing? And it turned out that he didn't want to tell me, but he finally did, he was taking classes. Ah. And that's when Wait I, a minute, can you repeat that? Yes. Look he, into that camera and say that. He took classes, and it helped him improve his read. Aha! So, Aha! Ah. <laughs> well, voiceover wow. acting classes. Voiceover acting classes. Uh, with a, a, and she's still up there teaching. She, her name had been, gosh, I'm telling way too much, uh, Bobby Block down Bobby here. Bobby Block. She had done a lot of cartoons, and for some reason she left L.A., moved to Northern California, changed her name to Samantha Paris, and started teaching. Mm. And actually, she, she wasn't my first lesson. I had a lesson with Lucille Bliss. I thought uh, you were going to see Lucille Ball. No. I'm like, I didn't have <laughs> any um, idea Lucille. I'm not that old. Okay. That came out well, of nowhere. Oh, yeah, we know that. <laughs> uh, Lucille Bliss was the voice of Smurfette. Smurfette? Uh -huh. on yes. the One of the original Smurfs. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, somebody hooked me up with her, and I went to her house, paid her 50 bucks. She listened to me read, and she said, eh, you don't need any more lessons. You're ready to go. <laughs> 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 wow. I just think she needed the 50 bucks. Yeah, I, I think so, too. You but, were a prodigy. Uh, I, I took some classes with uh, Samantha Paris, and then one day... Did I, she whip your butt? Yes, yeah, she did. Because she knows how to whip some butt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, good. Uh, I took some classes with her, and uh, one day her agent from Los Angeles came for a weekend seminar, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lee Gilbert. And uh, I did the weekend seminar, and Lee Gilbert said to me afterwards, you know... You're kind of talented. If you ever decide to come to L.A., look us up. We'd love to have you at SBV. Uh -huh. I had no idea uh, how much fortune had just dropped in my you lap. You didn't even know there were any other agencies. <laughs> well, I knew there were agencies, and, and, I, and I had kind of already made up yeah, my yeah. mind that one day I was yeah. going to move to L.A. And, and do voiceover work. My thought was... At the point that I started making as much money in voiceover as I was making in radio, mm -hmm. I'd make that move. And I was doing okay in radio. I was a morning guy yeah. at KSOL, the number one station, yeah, working yeah, yeah. under the name of Billy David Ocean. Billy David which Ocean. Which is a whole other story. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So did Billy Ocean steal your name? Well, actually, <laughs> I, I had been on the air before he hit with the song. Yeah, yes. Uh, and I was, at that point, it was just Billy Ocean and... Shortly after he'd been out, I changed it to Billy David Ocean because I got tired of the phone call. Yeah. Wow, man, I like your record. You know, Billy Ocean. So if you, you got a hit. You are the Queen. Was he, uh, <laughs> me your lover, lover. Yeah, yeah. Caribbean yeah. Queen. Yeah. yeah, that was the one. That yeah. was the one hit. That Caribbean was the duet, Queen. yes. And I got the call all the time. Well, man, you got a hit record. Why are you still on the radio? Oh, my gosh. And I told, well, you know, we just have the same name. And they go, really? Well, I said, what's your name? My name's Fred Johnson. <laughs> well, Fred, did it ever occur to you that there might be another Fred Johnson out there someplace? <laughs> yeah. 
smart to add the David. Oh, so I uh, added the David, and um, I was I was doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I knew one day I'd go to L.A. Mm -hmm. right. And then uh, February 9th, 1990, mm. the radio station fired everybody. Wow. Whoa. Just came, like that. Just like that. Came off the air of my morning shift and uh, was got wow. called into the... the uh, uh, the general manager's office and uh, was summarily fired, given a <laughs> little oh two-week severance, and bye-bye. See you later. See you later. And I, I actually never took the opportunity to thank them mm. because that allowed me to come down to L.A. Time to come to L.A., yeah. I called a buddy of mine. This, uh, well, first good, I, this might be a good time to say, say thank you. <laughs> thank you, KSOL, for firing me. <laughs> See? I never would have been sitting here no. with these guys That's if right. you hadn't fired me up there. Yeah. Dave, a lot of Billy. things that wouldn't have happened had that not That's happened. Right. So congratulations. Absolutely. Dave, Billy, yeah. David, Ocean, Fenoy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Try to get that on the mug. Yeah, right. okay. yeah, no, we, and actually, I, when I first came down here, I was using Billy, David, Ocean, mm -hmm. and I, I didn't like it. I, mm -hmm. it. It had actually never really been me. Uh, and I uh, asked... My agent says, can I just use my real name? And they went, oh, yeah, sure. I'm happy to. I'm like, ah! That's great. So uh, I've been uh, the real me, Dave Fenoy, ever since. I got to say, I kind of I like Dave Fenoy better, great. man. Me too. Yeah. And you know <laughs> what? It's way cooler. Being yourself is the best yeah. role to play anyway. You know what? So. And as a matter of fact, that is one of the secrets to having a successful voiceover career is mm. to be yourself. Mm. Now, if you're mm -hmm. like me and you happen to have a lot of views in you, but uh, you really want to be yourself. You really yeah. want to let it come from the heart and the head, and mm -hmm. that's how it works. Be real. Be Absolutely. Real. Yeah. Be real. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, so then you signed with SBV? I yeah, I signed with SBV. Um, I got down here, and at the time I was married, and uh, I would drive down from uh, the Bay Area to uh, L.A. for the week. I'd come down on... on uh, Sunday night or Monday morning and, and be here all week and then go home on, mm -hmm. on uh, Friday evening or, or Saturday morning. Um, and it was a year before I was able to move my family you, down. So you did that for a year? I did that wow. for a year, almost wow. a year. I, uh, about in, in the end of 90, there was a, another recession and uh, a lot of work dried up. Although I had been fortunate, I booked a job right away um, and I got a cartoon series right away, New Kids on the Block. Mm. Yes. Nice. I love that you have that credit. <laughs> I just, I don't know why, I just really love that, Dave Fennoy. I played Dick Scott, <laughs> the manager oh, of New Kids on the great. Block. I just love it. And it had been crazy, because I, as a disc jockey, I hated New Kids on the Block. <laughs> yeah. I just thought, oh, this is the worst thing in music ever that ever happened. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I was happy that they were doing <laughs> yes. so well. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, so I, I did it. But end of 90, a recession hit. The cartoon had ended um, or was about to end. And there just wasn't a lot. So I went back on radio. And I uh, did some shifts at KACE. And then I did mornings at Jazz FM mm. for a while. Mm -hmm. And I uh, loved that. But my career uh, picked up. I... Uh, uh, Later with Greg Kinnear, mm -hmm. I ended up being mm -hmm. the uh, announcer for Later with Greg Kinnear. I was doing promos for CBS and ABC and a bunch of other places and still some cartoons and commercials and life was good. Mm -hmm. So I walked away from radio again and... Uh, this they, time on your terms. This time yes, on my terms. exactly. Which is a nice thing. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah. yeah. And, and the rest is history. And the rest is history. And now he's here. He's famous. He's a rock star. Yeah. This is great. He's got his own cups. I mean, come on. When you have your own cup, you've made it. That's exactly. how you know you've made it. it That's is. how you know that you've made it. That is a sign of success. Because you can just put all your little money in there. When I have my coffee money holder. in the morning, I'm drinking out of me. <laughs> wow. So, Dave, I know that you do a lot of video games. You've done, like, how many now? Uh, it's approaching 50, mm. 50, somewhere around 50. 50 titles? That's a lot. That's a lot of crap. Um, what do you love most about video games? They are so much 
fun to do. You get to play these crazy characters. Um, sometimes you're a soldier or a captain or you know a, a, a colonel, a president, a warlock, a, a sorcerer, a, a, an imp, a dry play a two-headed <laughs> dragon in a game. I just yeah. just crazy, crazy, just crazy, yeah. crazy stuff. Yeah. Well, they're pretty. They can be brutal on your voice. They do you have any vocal warm-ups or rituals that you do to keep yourself going? Because so you're not just doing games, you're doing a million other things, too. Uh, not so much vocal warm-ups. I mean, I do do some. Uh, I make sure I drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. I try to take care of my voice. Uh, a lot of the games, there's a lot of shouting and whatnot, but there are things you can do to protect your voice even when you're shouting one let the microphone mm. uh help you yeah. out sure. a little bit everything doesn't have to be uh, you know instead of a total scream ah, yeah, yeah, and and take it out of your throat it's up up top and and mm -hmm. you get less damage that way right also uh when you're working for good directors uh they save that stuff yeah. for the end of the session uh and recently uh been working on The Walking Dead, and those are very long sessions. And if you were doing that screaming early mm -hmm. on, you'd never make it. Yeah. yeah. Well, your character, Lee Everett, is so cool. Oh. I mean, and he's so... And I'm not a huge gamer either, but I love... You know, I'm, I'm reading on all these different places about... And the, the gamers are just crazy over you. I mean, your character is so theatrical, and his backstory, it's, it's amazing. Well, you know, this is possibly my favorite game ever uh, to have done because of just what you're talking about. You really get to be an actor. Uh, it's not about the crazy voice. As a matter of fact, it's just my voice. Mm -hmm. right. It's really about uh, what's the backstory on this guy, what are his motivations, and because the decisions the player makes concerning you mm take the game yeah. in different directions, right. you get to play this character in different ways depending on what that player decides. Wow, that's Very right. Cool. Which yeah. Is, which, w yeah, which makes it mm -hmm. a lot more work. Well, a lot more work, which is work in the good sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You're filling up those four-hour sessions. Yeah, exactly. Every single, okay, yeah. now you're the same guy, but we got a little twist and, for you. And actually, the shortest session we've had has been three hours, and mm. I've sometimes done eight-hour sessions for them. Wow. Um, it turns out, I don't know who the person was, but they actually had somebody playing the part before me. Mm -hmm. And after they listened to the first, they said, eh, this isn't working out. And somehow, uh, to my good fortune, they found me mm -hmm. um, and uh, flew me up to the Bay Area, recording a cute little town called Fairfax. Fairfax. Nice. And, uh, and these are all, you know, the, the spawn of Lucas. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everybody had worked at, at mm -hmm. uh, uh, was it Digital Light and Sound? Mm -hmm. At the ranch for Lucas yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. yeah. spun off different game companies and mm -hmm. so forth. And uh, they really needed it to get done fast. Mm -hmm. So that first session, uh, I think I flew up for a couple of days and we were doing like eight and nine hour sessions. Wow. Whoa. It was it was crazy. Brutal. And then, you know, did that up there and then we'd do pickups uh, from my home studio mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of work, a lot of hours, mm -hmm. but very satisfying work. Mm -hmm. And having seen the finished product, uh, even were I not on the game, I'd be saying, wow, you guys have done yeah. a great job on it's, this. It's impressive, yeah. yeah. That's very, very well, cool. Well, you do so many different areas in the voiceover business. What do you think are your strengths as a voice actor, and what things are you still working on improving? I'm still working on everything. Mm -hmm. uh, frankly, I want to be uh, better as a narrator. I want to be better with commercials. I want to be better uh, as an animation voice. I, 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 I want to be better with promos. Uh, I can't think of an area where I don't want to improve and mm -hmm. continue getting better. I, you know, we kind of live in a world now where um, you have to constantly reinvent yourself. Things change so fast. When I think about just where technology was when I got into the business mm -hmm. and just the idea of an audition, you had to go in and do it at your yeah. agents. Yeah. I also had an agent in, in New York, uh, I still do, but uh, to do that audition uh, from home, uh, 
once I got a home studio, and that's later on. Yeah. Um, I had to do it, you know, record it into Pro Tools, bounce it onto a reel, uh, and they're, well, actually, we didn't do reels, and we did DATs. DATs, digital Bounce, audio tape. Yeah, mm -hmm. bounced it onto a DAT, uh, which costs five bucks, and then you had to FedEx the DAT so it would mm -hmm. be there the next day. So this all yeah. had to be done by 4.30. Mm -hmm. So you're spending about 15, 20 bucks per audition to send. And gone through that, then CDs, which were a little cheaper, and now doesn't cost you anything. No. Exactly. Just email the MP3. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, we have gone through quite a bit, which has changed the nature of voiceover. Uh, you used to have an agent. Now there are a lot of pay-to-play sites. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody with a Mac, a microphone, and a high-speed internet connection yeah. can at least Get started. pretend yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> they're in the voiceover exactly. business. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the plus and minus, a lot more people in it, so a lot more competition. The plus, it it does open up for a lot more people who do have talent and uh, can make a living doing this. But there's also a lot more areas to work in. Uh, the whole area of audiobooks. Mm. I don't know if you guys have talked to any audiobook people yeah, yet. Yeah, Scott, Scott Brick. Brick. Okay, Champ. there you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, uh, Fred Mu Frank Mueller used to be a real good friend of mine uh, who's passed away now. And... Uh, not something I have any interest in doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've talked to a few uh, friends of mine who do audiobooks, and they go, well, God, we love it. We love the storytelling. Mm -hmm. and I, All that's great, but it's just so many hours of work yeah. Yeah. Uh, to get it done. My attention span just isn't that long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But thank goodness that uh, there are people who are very good at it and mm -hmm. want to do it, and exactly. it's a market that continues to open up. E-learning. Mm -hmm. uh, another market that has continued to work open up for people. Uh, a lot of companies now, if they're going to do uh, a convention or something, they hire a voice to, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our mm -hmm. yeah. head of our company. And yeah. We all know him lovably as uh, that jerk of a boss, but yeah. we really yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, what, what do they call the in-show announcers? Is well, that what they're called? Yeah. I, I've done a lot of in-show announcers, but I... It, these are things that aren't broadcast, but people are making a living at mm -hmm. yeah. doing for yeah, conventions and stuff. corporate mm -hmm. meetings and that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so there's lots and lots and lots of areas. Uh, yeah, and I mean, people are making, you know, doing just the voicemail messages. Voicemail. That, that's it, another it, whole exactly. arena. Yeah. The phone message. I, don't, mm -hmm. I can't imagine myself as a phone message. <laughs> yeah. It would be Hi, pretty you've interesting. reached this company. Yeah. <laughs> Push I zero. don't know why you want to hear me <laughs> telling you how to do this. But yeah. Okay. Hi, this is Billy Ocean. No, <laughs> ah, <laughs> you're so bad. <laughs> why did I tell them that That'll story? That'll be your yeah. code name. By the way, for those of you out there who don't know about the voice messaging uh, part of the business, it's called IVR. Mm -hmm. So Google that and you'll find out what it's all about. It's a big business. It's growing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, everything has changed in this business. And uh, voiceover business is part of the world, and as the world changes, we change. Uh, and we are very much in a uh, DIY kind of world now, a do-it-yourself yeah. mm -hmm. world. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Which is why, you know, you gotta have a home studio. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. you have to, to learn those things. Uh, so I, I find that uh, if I had tried to stay who I was as a voiceover talent uh, 20 years ago, I, would, I couldn't be working then. You'd be out of yeah. business. I'd be out of yeah. business. Yeah. Uh, and that would be my advice to Anybody in this business, I don't care if you're just starting right now and the technology right now, it's going to change mm -hmm. and you're going to have to at some point change with the times. Mm -hmm. Well said. So Dave, you do a lot of award show announcing. What do you like about it? What are the challenges behind it? Because it's a very different... The challenge is usually you're, you're doing it live mm -hmm. and uh, so you cannot make a mistake. Mm. Uh, you're in a booth or a truck Mm -hmm. uh, or sometimes right off stage in a little room, you got your headphones on, you've got your monitor there, you got your microphone, you've got your button to push to to uh, uh, to s talk. <laughs> no sneeze. Now you, just turn, you just turn it off. You just turn it off. Yeah. Now you, you can't sneeze. You can't sneeze. You can't sneeze and you can't mess up. I'm out. Yeah. And you've got a notebook that's got everything in it. Mm -hmm. Every word is scripted. Uh, that's something that most people don't understand. Mm -hmm. um, all the hosts, all the presenters are 
looking at a a, a screen yeah. a, at a, a teleprompter, yeah. and you've got everything there, so even down to the singers who are singing all the songs, wow. all the words in the songs, and how many. Wow. So you're following along, and you you know what page you're okay. I'm gonna move. And in your headphones, you're hearing everything. You're hearing the director. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, camera two. Camera yeah. two, take two. Uh, let's push in on time. Uh, I've got a problem with so and so. Okay, where, where, where's this uh, talent? He's supposed to be over here now. You, you've got all of that going wow. on. And as you're watching, you know your time is coming up. And finally, you hear somebody say, "Okay, cue announce, announce," and you got to be on it. So. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's kind of a challenge, mm. but I enjoy that. It's a it's a real rush. It's a real high. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure your radio experience makes it a lot because you. Well, the have radio to be, experience helps. That's got to be because you have to be in the moment and you know on the fly. Interestingly enough, when I um, got into voiceover, that's one of the things that uh, Lee Gilbert, uh, my first agent, told me that because you came out of radio the easiest transition for you into voiceover is promos mm -hmm. and live announce. Sure. Yeah. And, yeah. And there you go. And it's been my great pleasure. I've done a lot of live announce, not all of it broadcast. I sometimes get booked to do things that aren't being broadcast, but uh, are happening in big halls and uh, mm -hmm. the Trumpet Awards and, uh, and lots of different yeah. kinds of award mm -hmm. shows. Uh, but it has been my great pleasure for the last geez, 15 years or so, uh, to be the announcer at the NAACP Image Awards. Mm -hmm. mm. I had to miss it uh, this last year because uh -oh. my daughter got married. Oh, good reason. And it was the same weekend. Good for daddy, yeah. Good, good for, for daddy. you yeah. choosing your daughter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tell you what, honey, I uh, can't make it. Funny yeah. story. I'm working um, that weekend, babe. <laughs> Can't walk you down the aisle. <laughs> Can you change the date? Yeah, that would not. That would make for an awkward holiday right? season. Right? Oh, bad day. <laughs> you know, so, some things are more important than work. Absolutely. And she was a lovely bride. She got married in in uh, uh, the Virgin Islands. Oh, mm. wow. Great guy. He's got dreadlocks too, so I know Very he's okay. Very good. There you go, man. And uh, so, anyway. I'm that's sorry, wonderful. I'm beaming with pride there. No, no, that's, that's cool. Wonderful. That's very cool. Well, I'm the youngest of five daughters, so yeah, when, I love when, my dad. Oh, she does, man, so much. And so do I. <laughs> um, my dad. When did the dread start? Like, is this something that you've always been? No, no. Uh, I started growing the dreads, jeez, oh, uh, about 96, 97, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I'd always liked dreadlocks, and uh, I had a very good friend, Jasiri Rojo, was a musician buddy of mine, and uh, he died mm -hmm. suddenly. And uh, I realized then that another day is not promised. You should do the things you want to do, because up until then I'd been nervous about growing dreadlocks. Eh, who's going to hire me? They're going to think I'm on drugs, ah, da 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 Yeah. And uh, right after that I said, you know what? I've always wanted dreads. Mm -hmm. Screw it. I'm growing the dreads. Yeah. Cool. Well, I, I gotta say, man, it looks. It is. It, it looks fantastic. You look great in dress. Well, yeah. Like, and Very you know this now, but it really helps you when you meet somebody yeah. for the first time. They don't forget. They don't forget. Of course, my my career as a criminal is over because oh, they could no. just Too pick me out. And, yeah. <laughs> Darn it. Yeah, I was a guy with a mingled gray dress. <laughs> yeah. Now the bad thing is, if you ever do anything bad or illegal. <laughs> There's somebody's gonna ID you oh, like yeah. that. It's, it's, it's that guy. It's over. It's over. Because <laughs> nobody looks like Dave. I know. This is awesome. It's great. It's cool. Um, really quick, what is, in, in just in life, what is your biggest accomplishment, and why? I think it's uh, raising a wonderfully successful, kind, smart child mm. that, uh, who grew up to be a wonderful woman, who's very secure and uh, she runs her own design business. Uh, she has been uh, the designer on HGTV's Bang For Your Buck. That, nice. yeah. that may be yeah. the thing I am most proud of. Um, other than that, I, uh, I try to be kind to people. Mm -hmm. um, I am proud of the work I do. I understand that in, in terms of importance in the world, it's not really that important. I'm not saving anybody's life. I'm not mm. a doctor. I'm not really a teacher, So, although sometimes I, I teach about voiceover. Uh, but I enjoy what I do, and I I think of what, as voiceover, as art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and that's how I approach it. Because, you know, especially when you look at the commercials, what are you doing? You're, you're convincing people to buy things they may not need or watch TV shows they may not need to watch. <laughs> right. I'm not sure how much value there is in that just for the human soul mm -hmm. other than the artistry. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and the enjoyment I, I get out of being able to deliver that message and, and touch a heart or mind with my heart and mind. Mm -hmm. That's the key to success right there. Okay, I know, another cliffhanger <sighs> for you, but it's in my contract. We have run out of time. We have run out of time. <laughs> but be sure to tune in next week for part two of Mr. Fenoy because it's going to be awesome. It is, but it gives you time to go to VOBuzzWeekly.com and go to our contact page and write your rave so we can put it on our raves page. That's right. right. And find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at VOBuzzWeekly. Hey, you guys, take care until next time. And just remember, you, you always, always have time, time for a little buzz. buzz.